People have asked me so many times, should I buy Splatoon 2 now, even with Splatoon 3 on the way? And I'll say now is a perfectly fine time to buy the game. It has a good year and change until Splatoon 3 is even on the shelves, at minimum. But then they ask the real question, will Splatoon 2 die when Splatoon 3 comes out? No. I mean, even though Splatoon 2 came out over three and a half years ago, people still talk about Splatoon 1. So why would it be any different for Splatoon 2 in relation to Splatoon 3? If anything, Splatoon 3's announcement has, for now at least, garnered renewed interest in Splatoon 2. So why do I think that Splatoon 2 will survive past the actual release of Splatoon 3? Reason number one is Salmon Run. Salmon Run won't be in Splatoon 3. We have a little Salmon Buddy, a little good boy. With him by our side, why would he be going around bashing baddie salmons to make spare change? After all, it seems like the harsh environment of the Splatlands might even give Inklings and Octolings more to do. Especially if, you know, we uh get those apartments. <laughs> uh, but that's besides the point. I think that we will have some kind of co-op adventure in Splatoon 3 to play with friends, but it won't be in Salmon Run. It could be Mr. Grizz related, seeing as many people, including myself, believe Mr. Grizz to be a key bad guy for Splatoon 3. But leaving Salmon Run in Splatoon 2 only gives Splatoon 2 even better longevity. Salmon Run is free, minus the cost of a Nintendo Online subscription. The only thing keeping people from playing it all day long is the fact that Salmon Run does require some time where it's closed. In Splatoon 3, if you're craving that Salmon Run experience, you'll have to close down Splatoon 3, start up Splatoon 2, and play Salmon Run that way. Can you imagine how many newcomers might join the franchise starting with Splatoon 3 and wonder, wow, what is the origin of this silly little guy that I got with me? Without Salmon Run as a key component, some newer players will end up backtracking to purchase Splatoon 2. Easy money for Nintendo, and Splatoon 2 won't be abandoned. But before I move on, it's a good time to mention that Octo Expansion will also pull people in in the same way. Story-based, canon to the universe DLC locked just one game will inevitably mean that people will come back to relive everything from the levels they loved to the good old Agent 3 fight that has never ever ever caused anyone pain. Never! Reason number two, the sheer size of the player base. Splatoon 2 has sold way over 10 million copies of their game. With a fan base that large, there's no way that every owner of Splatoon 2 is gonna be buying Splatoon 3 at release. Some people like to wait for a game to be out for a while before they purchase it, and $60 is a lot of money. If Splatoon 2 is alive and well at the time of Splatoon 3's release, which seems pretty likely to be in the summer of 2021, there's plenty of reason to believe that some fans will be happy to keep playing Splatoon 2 for a while. On top of that, a lot of Splatoon 2's fan base is pretty young. Splatoon is marketed as a franchise for all ages. Not every kid will be able to get their hands on the game. Some might wait until Christmas, some might wait until their birthday, and then you have families with multiple kids who might need multiple copies of the game. Ah. So what will the kids do when they don't get their turn on the Nintendo Switch with that funky new Splatoon 3 copy? They'll pull out their own Nintendo Switch with their still working still find copy of Splatoon 2 and probably play with their friends who also own Splatoon 2. If you pick up and play Splatoon 1, the lobbies still fill up almost right away, even to this day. While there are quite a few more hackers, I guess most games in Splatoon are still normal. Just think about how in a few years from now, people will be making throwback videos to Splatoon 2. <laughs> Imagine making a throwback video? I would never do that. Reason number three, good old nostalgia. If I speak about favorite weapons, there comes to be a small issue. Long-term enjoyers of Splatoon might be hesitant to buy the game at release if they use the trickle-in content structure that the development team has used for both the previous games. Splatoon and Splatoon 2 both started with only a portion of the weapons available, and the rest were added on as the game's time on the shelf progressed. This was felt more heavily by Splatoon 2 players who owned Splatoon and were then surprised to see their favorite weapons unavailable at release or to have only one kit available for a weapon they liked and then they didn't like that kit. For example, the custom jet squelcher in Splatoon and Splatoon 2 has Burst Bomb, which provide versatility for the weapon and make it a lot better. But that Burst Bomb jet didn't make its way into Splatoon 2 until November of 2017. Some weapons, such as the Hydra Splatling, just straight up didn't exist in the game for months. 
The original Hydra kit was added at the end of November that year, so you had weapons like the Jet getting new kits before weapons like the Hydra even got re-added to the game. This led to a very volatile metagame for a lot of the early competitive scene of Splatoon 2, as new weapons were constantly being added and other weapons were being modified to have new kits. A lot of players liked this because it surely kept the game fresh, but I can imagine that if the development team does go this route with Splatoon 3, that some players might keep playing Splatoon 2 for a little bit longer. And then there's other things to question. What happens if a weapon is nerfed terribly in Splatoon 3 compared to how it plays in Splatoon 2? Splatoon 2's blasters and rollers are definitely weaker compared to how they operated in Splatoon. Splatoon 2's splatlings don't move as quickly as they did in Splatoon. These are things that players miss, and they're often willing to return to Splatoon just to see them again. If the development team were to, let's say, make Brella shields a lot weaker in Splatoon 3, or make the Nautilus fire slower like it did before that buff, or shrink the range of the ball point splatling, you know that players would return to Splatoon 2 in a heartbeat to avoid these nerfs at least every once in a while. As time goes on after Splatoon 3's release, some players will just get nostalgic for the good old days, especially if Splatoon 2 was their first game. It's really funny to say the good old days, seeing as this game will be at most like 5 years old when Splatoon 3 drops. You ever think about how Splatoon will be 7 years old by then? I don't like that. Uh, back to the video. Wait, there's... there's no more video? I, I said everything I wanted to say? Oh, um, well, I hope I convinced you that Splatoon 2 isn't going anywhere. Let me know in the comments what you like the most about Splatoon 2, so we can get a little of that nostalgia going already for a game that still has, like, another year? Maybe even a year and a half to go before it actually has competition to deal with? Ah, uh, bye bye